Hello guys and welcome back and in this video we are going to discuss what are the some of the important questions which are asked in an interview when you are appearing for AWS. Now this video is specifically for people who are fresher. So if you have some experience obviously this video is not for you. So let's try to understand what are the various questions and how you should answer them. Okay, so often interviewer, when you are sitting there and you are saying that you have the expertise of AWS, if you have some certification of AWS, and if you're saying that you're a fresher, the first question they ask you, what is AWS? Now, obviously this is an important question because this, this question, they are going to try to understand that do you actually have the understanding of something which is known as cloud computing. Now here they don't want to, they don't want to know what are the various services available in AWS. If you give them, that is good. But they want to understand, do you actually conceptually understand what is AWS and can you differentiate between AWS and a traditional uh, hosting provider? So, first of all, in this particular question, you should be answering what is cloud computing technically? Secondly, you should be answering how AWS is taking advantage of it. Third, you can mention the services, explaining what is infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service now if you give this answer it is going to seal the deal for you for a very specific reason the interviewer when they ask you this question what is aws they want to understand actually what is your understanding and if you give them three these points they are going to seal the interview at least for you the second question which is often asked are what are the various services or I should say primary services offered by AWS. Now try to understand cloud altogether irrespective of AWS, Microsoft, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, they sort of provide all these similar services. If I talk about in terms of AWS, you would be saying compute which is EC2, S3 is there, then VPC is there, light sale is there. Cloud front is there. Then there is AWS uh, Lambda if I talk about. So these are some of the primary services which are quite useful in AWS and they are rigorously used. If I talk about in terms of S3, this is storage. Obviously, we will be discussing in the further section. Then we have VPC, which is a virtual private network. If I talk about, then we have EC2, which is sort of a compute instance, if I may. Light sale is a smaller version or sub version of EC2. If I talk about CloudFront, as I mentioned, it is going to be for CDN. It is used for CDN. Then we have AWS Lambda, which is serverless technology. So you need to try to understand that these are the various primary services offered by AWS. Now, I just want to mention one thing. AWS offers more than 200 services. And this may change when you're looking at this particular video. So just be sure when they ask you this question, do mention this point that they have more than 200 services. Okay, coming into the important question, there's the next question which they often ask is, what is S3? Now, S3, technically, if I talk about it, it sounds very complicated, but it is not. How to answer this particular question? You would be saying S3 is actually a storage service. S3 is a storage service. Secondly, you can store almost unlimited amount of data. You can store almost unlimited amount of data. Third and the most important thing which you have to mention in S3 is about the pricing part of it. So if you want to have a higher pricing, like you want to store it plus access it frequently, a simple example I would give is your images. If you want to store your images and you want to store them or I should say access them frequently, AWS is going to charge you more. But let's say if you want to store some data like your bank statement which you want to just store you want to access it very in, infrequently if i talk about in that case aws is going to charge you very less for the storage of the data but very high for the retrieval of the data so this is how you would be answering what is s3 and this is going to give the interviewer the impression that you have the right technical knowledge related to s3 
Now the next question they would be asking you, they could be asking you obviously, what is cloud front? Now try to understand one thing, majority of the time, a lot of freshers confuse between S3 and cloud front. It feels, I don't know why, I have seen, I've interviewed a lot of candidates and they make this kind of a mistake. I don't know why they make this. They feel like that S3 as this is for storage and CloudFront as this is for storage, they are similar. The answer is actually no. S3 is for storage. S3 is for storage, but CloudFront, if I may, is actually for serving the data which is stored in S3. Like let's say Netflix, if I talk about Netflix, again, I'm not going to quote this because I've never worked with Netflix, but they use S3 or I should say CloudFront for their streaming. So whatever data which is consumed or I should say we consume as a consumer of Netflix is served from CloudFront. So CloudFront is technically a CDN service provided by S, uh, sorry, AWS, which is used for these streaming services. Why? Because the data retrieval, if I talk about it is in one digit latency, which is quite important, especially for the consumers who these days are looking for instantaneous data, or I should say live data. Now the interviewer can ask you a next question, which is quite important question because I don't think there is a company which is not using this kind of a service. I'm not saying that they are not using this, but this kind of a service. What is SNS? SNS stands for Simple Notification Service. Do you remember how many times you get those push notifications which are annoying? in your mobile phone 50 percent off watch now stream now buy now all these notifications which come to your mobile phone well again i will not say that they are responsible because of sns but yes they use the terminology or i should say concept of simple notification service now the simple notification service is not limited to just push notification it is widely used so like you can send the sms you can send the email you can also send the push notifications which i've already discussed so you need to try to understand this is one of the service which is from one source to many source i would say one two three so this is what SNS is. It is a service with which we can send the notification at mass. Okay, the next question is a very important service, if I may, of AWS. It is AWS Disaster Recovery. Now try to understand, if I talk about in terms of a global infrastructure, I have to be prepared because the world is very volatile. What do I mean by volatile? Well, there is a good possibility that certain country loses their power. There is a good possibility certain country is facing sanctions. There is a good possibility that certain country is actually not capable of putting their infrastructure up and running. So what can happen? Your company can actually face challenges. They can lose potential customer because of this. So what happens? AWS has provided something which is known as disaster recovery. In short, I want to give a very simple example of it. Let's say your data is being served from this particular location. This is a country A. Now this country goes down for some X, Y, Z reasons. So what AWS is going to do, it's going to shift your data or I should say serving of your data or streaming of your data from country B. So this particular country or I should say this particular location is now going to serve stream or store your data. So you have a seamless experience running these services. Now let's try to understand one more important service of AWS and an important question which is usually asked and especially I ask it to understand how deep they know AWS as a cloud. Well, the question is, what is cloud formation? Now, if you're going to work with a big company, obviously doing stuff manually is going to be a disaster. If you're going to work in a company which is doing all their work manually, this is going to be a disaster. So what company prefer? Company prefer automation. Company prefer automation. Now the problem with automation is obviously it is very difficult and you, you want to build custom solution out of it. 
So what AWS does, AWS has something which is known as cloud formation where you will give a template and when you're going to execute this, it is going to create those services for you. An example, you said, I want two EC2 instance inside a VPC, one S3 and what else service we can have? We can have, let's say, CloudFront. This is a template. Now, once you give this template to CloudFormation, it is going to create exactly two EC2 instance. It is going to create a VPC, it is going to create a S3, and it is going to create a CloudFront instance. So try to understand, without me creating these things manually, I've just given all the details, I've filled all the details, and now I am done. Now everything AWS is going to take care for me. So cloud formation, if I may, it is one of the major tool used to automate the infrastructure building. This is also known as infrastructure as a code. So I have the final question for you, which is widely asked. What is VPC? First of all, VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. What it is? It is basically a virtual network. You have these various devices which are interconnected. Now, again, this is not the technical representation how these things are connected. But yes, they are safeguarded from the external world. The people from the external world cannot access those resources unless we have decided. So what this gives us the ability, it gives us the ability to create an intranet if I may, with which we can actually combine all our resources so they are not either exposed to the public world or some services are exposed to the public world which we have decided and this is something which we control. Why do we need to do that? Because obviously at the scale with which we are working, we have to make sure that not many people are able to access whatever resources we are running.